Another day, another adventure. Today we are exploring the city of Falmouth, the capital of Trelawney Parish in Jamaica. Falmouth and the parish itself had a rocky start. Before, there was only four parishes, and this area belonged to St. James. By 1739, the county contained 140 working estates. In 1768, the number increased to 265 estates. In the early years, people started lobbying for a new parish, but Governor Hunt rejected the idea. As years passed by, more sugar planters moved northward to establish their own states, and another growth in the area was the booming trade with the United States. Back then, St. James was the only parish, and so planters had to deliver their produce all the way to the port of Montego Bay. The distance was long, and the poor road condition led to volumes of their produce going to waste. The long distance and inadequate roads forced the people of the Eastern Parish to demand for separation. The new governor, Sir William Trelawney, signed the Act of Assembly of Jamaica on December 29, 1770. In gratitude, the parishioners named the parish Trelawney after the governor. The E that is missing from the name of the parish was an error on the part of the eager parishioners that has never been corrected. The main town then was Martha Bray Village, but because of its location on high ground, small area and narrow coastline, the people decided to create a new capital closer to the port. The Trelawney Town Council established a commission with Edward Moulton Barrett as chairman. It is not known if he used his position as chair to influence the decision of the commission, but the land on which the new capital was built after 1790 curiously enough belonged to the Barrett family and was called Barrett Lands. The town was established in 1769 when Edward Barrett, the grandfather of the English poet Elizabeth Barrett Brown, sold 170 acres of the land for the establishment of the new town. Barrett kept the coastal land for himself, but donated land for a courthouse, church, and public buildings to be built. While many towns grow organically, Falmouth was planned from inception. About the courthouse, it was erected in 1850. The building is a Georgian design, well proportioned, with seemingly vertical and horizontal grads crossing the building. Other unique features of this type include span lights, shingled walls, and jalousies. The courthouse was raised by fire in 1926 but was rebuilt. There was no other town in Trelawney that could compete with the Barrett lands for the privilege of being named the new capital, Moulton Barrett wanted to name it Barrett Town. But the parishioners objected. Instead, they preferred to continue the honor given to the governor and name the capital Falmouth after the governor's birthplace in Cornwall County, England. Roads were laid out in great formation. Beside Kingston and Spanish Town, the new capital at the time was one of the three that was built in accordance with the Gridian plan. In other words, the town was divided into square and rectangular blocks separated by vertical and horizontal streets, similar to a chessboard, then subdivided into lots, which were sold. Also, fresh water was piped out from the nearby Martha Bray River to reservoir in the town center. Falmouth had a pipe water system before even New York City had one. Between 1800 and 1840, Falmouth was one of Jamaica's thriving poor towns. Jamaica was one of the leading sugar exporters in the world. Much of Jamaica sugar was shipped from Falmouth. The wharves would handle around 30 ships a day. Usually unloading slaves shipped from Africa and filling the ships back with sugar and rum bound for Europe. Many grand houses were built in Falmouth as planters kept second homes in the town. The town was also known for lively nightlife, with many ships' crews eager to spend their money while on shore.
one of the accomplishments Hamut has is the establishment of the Phoenix Foundry. The primary function of the Phoenix Foundry was to repair shops stuck at Falmouth Harbor, but it also repaired boilers, pans, and other sugar manufacturing equipment. The establishment of the foundry showed that the commercial enterprises in the new capital spanned more than just the sugar industry. The decline of Falmouth when slavery was abolished, the sugar industry of Trelawney was badly affected. The 1840s also saw the rise of steamship use for transatlantic crossings. These heavier boats required a deeper harbor than Falmouth could offer. This double blow heralded a sharp decline in Falmouth's fortunes. With its commercial ventures suffocated, the wealth of Falmouth dried up. Deterioration has continued on to this day. To revive Falmouth, the government is promoting the city through tourism. Caribbean cruises usually dock on the port to explore the city and visit its cultural buildings along with the hospitable people of the city. While I go and have a drink in this store, I hope you guys enjoyed the rise and fall of Father.